Good morning, and welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. On the second Sunday in Lent, our sermon for today is from Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38, titled, Saving Jesus' Reputation, with Pastor Don Kirst. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for the sermon this morning is the gospel reading that we heard a few moments ago from Mark chapter 8. Two young men in London, Connecticut, New London, Connecticut, I should say, a few years ago were charged in connection with a convenience store robbery and murder. But their fate was sealed by a video surveillance camera from the store. It happens that during the robbery, one of the gunmen pulled his shirt up over his face to hide his identity, but in doing so, he revealed the strange tattoo and words on his stomach. Forgive me, and a crucifix tattooed on his back. Well, he wasn't hard to identify. Soren Kierkegaard, or from my Danish relatives, uh, they would say Søren Kierkegaard, the Danish Christian existentialist philosopher once said, if we mean by Christian what the New Testament means by Christian, then in any given generation, there may be five or six true Christians. Well, Kierkegaard is being a little sarcastic concerning couch potato Christians and the radical commitment of lifestyle into which Jesus Christ calls us. Kierkegaard had a hard time accepting the church of his day back in the 1800s because he believed it was so enmeshed with the values of wealth, power, and prestige that marked the secular world. And Kierkegaard told how he once went into the magnificent cathedral in Copenhagen and took his place in a pew and uh, was going to participate in the Sunday worship. And he recalled how the sun shone through the stained glass windows and glistened off of the, the brilliantly colored tapestries that hung on the cathedral's walls. And he watched as the velvet-robed minister took his place behind the golden pulpit, opened the gilded Bible and marked it with a satin marker and read. And Jesus said, If any man would be my disciple, let him forsake all. Take up his cross and follow me. And Kierkegaard remarked, and nobody even laughed. Well, maybe we can sense a common theme in these two stories. The hold-up man with the crucifix on his back and the velvet robe minister behind the golden pulpit reading about forsaking all and taking up his cross and following Jesus. Does any of this seem discordant to you? Or we could remember our flamboyant governor, Jesse Ventura, who was quoted as saying that organized religion is a sham and a crutch for weak-minded people. Well, whatever we may have thought about the governor is irrelevant, but 
he does speak for a great many people in our society today. And we also need to realize that the time is coming when Christians have got to get it right about speaking and living out the truth of the gospel in our society, or we're going to be sadly out of touch. Jesus did say clearly, if anyone would be my disciple, let him forsake all, take up his cross, and follow me. Well, just what does it mean to forsake all and take up the cross to follow Jesus? Jesus had a definite mission, and he spelled it out at the beginning of his ministry. In Luke 4, 18 and 19, we read that it is to preach the good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And we too misrepresent the gospel when we limit Jesus' mission to just getting people into heaven. He came to do that of course. But his mission had very much also to do with the hurts and suffering of people in this earthly life. And I suspect that many people have never given it a thought about just why there are so many hospitals with religious names, so many schools with religious origins, and they have no idea that most of the social reforms that have swept through the Western world over the last 2,000 years have been led by people who, above all, were committed to Jesus Christ in their personal lives that led them to do tremendous things to help people. And others sometimes see TV evangelists with diamonds on their fingers and fancy hairdos and a message of prosperity for believers, like Joel Osteen, pastor of the largest Protestant church in the U.S., and they think it has something to do with Jesus. So, in a sense, it's time for you and I to do something about Christ's reputation in the world. Where is our passion to, say here at Faith Lutheran, for righting some of the wrongs that are obvious to us in our society, in our community? Where is our passion to for helping the hurting, the needy, and the outcasts? Well, this isn't to say that the needy are easy to help. And anyone, many of you who have ever tried to help the needy already know they're not always easy to help. It's easy to sometimes just throw up our hands and say, well, some of these people don't deserve our help. They're where they are because of alcohol or drugs or maybe some other bad behavior, and they make some terrible choices. But caring for people who've made some poor choices isn't an option for the follower of Jesus any more than it was for Christ himself. Our Lord had a mission. When we forsake all, take up our cross and follow him. We're giving ourselves to the mission he began. But there's also a second thing to be said. Christian worship and involvement here at Faith Lutheran Church isn't just an end in itself to be here 
on Sunday mornings, but it's a means of preparing us for serving in the world. It's in our mission statement that that's what the purpose is, is to prepare us for our ministry of faith. Or check out the sign when you leave and get onto the highway this morning. There are some groups that measure Christian discipleship in terms of how often people go to church. Well, going to church is important. Don't get me wrong. Worshiping the Lord isn't optional for followers of Jesus. But worship is in some ways a minimal act of commitment. As the old saying in the Quaker church goes, the service begins when the meeting is over. Well, I'm glad you're in worship today. But I hope you realize that the acid test of your and my commitment to Christ isn't how well we sing hymns or how carefully you listen to the sermon. I hope you're listening. But the real acid test happens when, when you walk out the door. When you and I are willing to carry our cross... And it can be hard because there are people in our society who think we're a sham. And there's only one way to prove them wrong, by serving and loving and helping like Jesus. You just can't argue about loving other people and find something wrong with that. In 1 Peter 4, 8, we read, above all, keep on loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. And that brings us to the last thing our text implies about taking up a cross. Following Jesus is the path to a fulfilling life. There are so many people in our society today with fat bank accounts and empty souls, and there is a better way. It's to get involved in the mission that Jesus began of reaching out to the least the lowly, and the hurting. It's forsaking all and taking up a cross and following Jesus. And Jesus said, as we heard, if you try to save your life, that is by living apart from God, you will lose it. But Jesus also said, if you lose your life for his sake, and for the sake of the gospel, you will find it. If you live by faith in Jesus Christ, giving your life in service to God, your life will have meaning and purpose. You'll have a true life, that eternal life Jesus came to give us that will never end. And Jesus is the one who makes this possible. He helps us deny ourselves to get out of our comfort zone and take up our crosses and follow him. And so when you suffer, keep your eyes on the cross of Jesus. The mountain that seems impossible to you, may be climbed by his grace and with him. And suffering is also an opportunity for us to be drawn into a closer relationship with Jesus as we rely on him 
for our true source of strength and comfort and hope and life eternal. A Christian mountain climber attempting to scale one of the the lofty summits of the Sierra Nevada mountains fell. And his athletic body was injured and crippled for life. And friends asked why he hadn't prayed to God for healing. I have, he answered. But God hasn't helped you, they responded. Yes, he did, the injured man replied. I prayed hundreds, if not thousands of times for the Lord to heal me, and he finally healed me of the need to be healed. The Lord helped me discover a peace inside the pain. And this is the response of someone who's climbed the mount of suffering and viewed his life from the perspective of the cross. The grace of God in Jesus Christ gave him peace despite his suffering. The forgiveness of sin and the promise of everlasting life gave him a joy that surpasses his pain. He was determined to give the rest of his life in service to Jesus Christ, confident of Christ's promise that in doing so, he'd find far more than he lost. May God instill a similar attitude in us, and then in taking up our crosses and following him, we'll not only be saving Jesus' reputation, but also leading hurting souls to the healing of his love, our great physician. May God's peace that passes our understanding keep your hearts and minds in him. Amen. We rise and let's join in confessing our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 8 in your bulletin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thanks for viewing today's sermon. Faith Lutheran Church is located at 3000 County Road 8, Southeast St. Cloud, Minnesota, 56304. Phone 320-252-3315.